بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, This is lecture 9 of uh, the subject server side web development and as you can see it's about security and uh, the sheet uh, is for lecture 9 plus 10 so in this lecture I will explain the first part lecture 9 and inshallah in the next week or uh, next video I will explain the remaining of this sheet which as you can see here has uh, 107 slides uh, so let us begin security and this is uh, chapter 16 of the book fundamentals of web development the book I'm depending on to explain the topics of this subject and here are the objectives uh, or the sections of this sheet first uh, we have security principles after that we'll talk about authentication then uh, cryptography and this will be these three sections I will explain in lecture 9 and then inshallah in lecture 10 I will explain the uh, HTTPS uh, the concepts of security related to HTTPS and also security best practices and common threat vectors so we start by uh, section 1 security principles uh, security overview so uh, design security from the beginning and all along the way this is the best practice now uh, years ago uh, applications were developed and then after that uh, they are modified and security uh, was added as a form of uh, some code some configurations some uh, uh, added functionality and so on after the system or the application has been developed now the trend now is to uh, to plan for security from scratch from the beginning okay so design security from the beginning and all along the way and this includes a malicious hacker on tropical island uh, sloppy programmer uh, disgruntled manager naive secretary uh, these are the sources from which the threats come to your application or system hackers of course um, sloppy programmers working with you some programmers can make some mistakes which will result in uh, security uh, issues and uh, also disgruntled managers and naive secretaries so since websites are an application of networks and computer systems you must draw from those disciplines to learn many fundamental or foundational security ideas so for uh, information security we have the CIA uh, trade uh, information security is the practice of protecting information from unauthorized users that means uh, the users who should not get this information or see it or read it or uh, access it by any way and authorized users information assurance is ensured is uh, to ensure that data is not lost when issues do arise uh, computer and IT security is just one aspect of this holistic thinking which addresses the role computers and network play here uh, that means there are other considerations for information security not related to computer or IT 
may be related to the people working in the organization may be related to the processes and procedures of work in that organization may be related even to the equipments used by that organization and so on may be related to the customers of that organization and or institution so <coughs> Uh, computer and IT is uh, just one one aspect of information security. So uh, the CIA trade uh, this is from the model for security policy development. When you would like to develop a policy for your information security, you have this triangle with three uh, basic bases. Uh, we have confid uh, confidentiality uh, that means you will have some issues and topics uh, security and uh, security issues re related to what is known as confidentiality other uh, issues about integrity and others about availability so we have the C from confidentiality the I from integrity and the A from availability, so we have the CIA trade. Here are definitions for the three terms. First, confidentiality. This is the principle of maintaining privacy for the data. For the data you are storing, you are transmitting, you are using, manipulating, and so on. That means uh, uh, treat or uh, look at this data as private data we, uh, we, that means we don't need uh, all the people to see it to access it to use it and so on so this is the concept most often thought of when security is brought up so most of the people when we say security uh, think of confidentiality but uh, we have other two issues integrity is the principle of ensuring the data is accurate and correct and these are two different concepts you have to differentiate between them accurate and correct <coughs> okay uh, this can include preventing unauthorized access and modification but also extends to disaster preparedness or preparedness and recovery so uh, when we say integrity we mean all these uh, unauthorized access should be prevented and also modification and authorized modification so should be also be prevented and also to prepare yourself for uh, any catastrophe or any consequences of any problem which can happen so the preparedness the prepare to be prepared to be ready for any unexpected condition or situation availability is the principle of making information available when needed to authorized people so it is essential to making the other two uh, elements relevant since without it it's easy to have a confidential and integral system that means if availability is not an issue for you then it's very simple very easy for you to secure your information but uh, to make uh, the information available to all your employees in the organization to all your customers maybe to some of your partners and aliases this brings risks and uh, threats to your information so without availability if availability is not an issue for you these two uh, will be very easy security standards uh, this is really serious stuff uh, so uh, the ISO standards ISO with this number give best practices for security 
so uh, speak directly about security techniques and are uh, routinely adopted by governments and corporations uh, uh, all, all around the world these standards are very comprehensive outlining the need for risk assessment and management security policy and business continuity to address the trade and there are uh, no <coughs> organizations for putting security standards uh, one of them is international standards organization and the other is international electrotechnical commission and there are others there are actually uh, a lot of uh, organizations uh, uh, working on security and uh, providing standards for uh, all organizations and institutions around the world to agree on them and uh, to make them uh, compulsory for uh, security purposes so risk assessment and management risk assessment uses the concepts of uh, actors uh, impacts threats and vulnerabilities so to determine where to invest in defensive counter measures so that means according to these we will know where uh, we need to put our effort to, to put our money our uh, equipment, our systems, our code, or computers, and so on. And here are definitions for each one of them. Uh, actors are people who are attempting to access your system. <coughs> Simply said. And we have uh, three amigos, or three categories of them. We have internal actors, external actors, and partner actors. Internal actors are the people who work for the organization. Uh, a small percentage of the attacks comes from these people usually, especially dangerous due to their internal knowledge of the systems. External actors, uh, those are people outside of the organization, like customers for example. More than three quarters of external actors are affiliated with organized crime or nation states. Partner actors affiliated with an organization that you partner or work with. Quite often partners are granted some access to each other's systems. For example, to place orders and or uh, taxation and other purposes the impact one of the factors of uh, the risk assessment is what systems were uh, uh, in <coughs> infiltrated and what data was stolen or lost so uh, a loss of availability prevents users from accessing some of some or all of the systems this is one of the uh, risks this might manifest as a daniel of service attack or an sql injection attack where the hacker removes the entire user database uh, preventing logins from registered users a loss of confidentiality includes the disclosure of confidential information to uh, a third party, usually often malicious third party. This con uh, could manifest as, or could, uh, could appear as a cross-site script attack where your data is stolen right off your screen or a full-fledged database theft where credit cards and passwords are taken. A loss of integrity changes your data or prevents you from having correct data. So this might manifest as an attacker hijacking a user session, perhaps placing fake orders or changing user's home address, for example. The threats 
the path that a hacker could use to exploit a vulnerability and gain unauthorized access to your system. A flood destroying your data center is a threat just as much as malicious SQL injections, buffer overflows, denial of service, and cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, threads categorize threads with strides. So we have a spoofing. The attacker in the spoofing, the attacker uses someone else's information to access the system. Tampering, the attacker modifies some data in an unauthorized ways. Repudiation. Repudiation, the attacker removes all trace of their attacks so that they cannot be held accountable for other damages done. Information disclosure, the attacker access data they should not be able to. The denial of service, the attacker prevents real users from accessing the system. Alleviation of privilege the attacker increases their privileges on the system thereby getting access to things they are not authorized to do vulnerabilities the holes in your armor once vulnerabilities are identified they can be assessed for risk some vulnerabilities are not fixed because they are unlikely to be exploited while others are low risk because the consequences of an exploit are not critical the top five classes of web vulnerabilities are injection uh, broken authentication and session management cross-site scripting insecure direct uh, object references security misconfiguration and uh, there are sources for this uh, information in the web you can find many sources actually um, remote code injection here is an example uh, this usually use register globals register we discussed before this lecture we have discussed register globals in PHP and requires this uh, one of the register globals and this is an example for the use of it also we have SQL injection and uh, we discussed that already and cross-site scripting via the input is sent back as output like hello message or a search engine result uh, assessing a risk uh, risk assessment begin by identifying actors, vulnerabilities, threats to your information systems, the probability of an attack, the skill of the actor, the impact of successful penetration. These are all factors in determining where to focus your security efforts. And here is a visual way of uh, assessing threats uh, you put a table like this one in one side you have the probability of the attacks or the risk and the impact of that risk and then you fill uh, this table with the percentage for each one here for example for probability we have a very high high medium low and very low and the same for the impact very low, low, medium, high, and very high. This is just a template you can use. The policies, these are uh, one part of your defenses. And uh, you have usage policy. This defines what systems users are permitted to use and under what situations or conditions. For example, uh, prohibit social networking while at work uh, or uh, uh, usage policies are often designed to reduce risk by removing some attack vector authentication policy this controls how users are granted access to the systems 
and uh, the legal policies define a wide range of things including data retention and backup policies as well as accessibility requirements like having all public communication well organized for the blind uh, also uh, we have password policies uh, and this can stipulate the characteristics of acceptable passwords and expiration of passwords ironically uh, draconian password policies introduce new attack vectors uh, nullifying the purpose of the policy at the first place so whether authentication is critical two-factor authentication should be applied in place of password policies that do not increase security uh, business continuity this is part of a secure system is being able to access uh, in the case of unforeseen issues consider uh, administrator password management uh, something happens to the administrator administrator personal issues and uh, you must have a plan also you have the backups and redundancy what do we need to get to get it up and running again if the system crashes for any uh, security issue and uh, we must, must consider our code our servers our operating system and others and also we have geographic redundancy uh, take home uh, remote server uh, stage mock events uh, auditing systems uh, logs and audit trails in database and so on uh, secure by design uh, so uh, there are malicious users out there so continually distrust user input and even internal values throughout the design and implementation phases <coughs> that means uh, validate user input you have to validate user input uh, so you have to plan for that in the design and implementation phases of uh, the system life cycle this produces uh, more secure software than if you didn't consider security at every stage so techniques can be applied at every stage of the software development life cycle to make your software secure by design and here is as you can see uh, the information system life cycle here requirements analysis and then design implementation testing and deployment and here for uh, requirements for example we <coughs> you can apply uh, or specify uh, the privacy needs and the security policy and the CIA trade from the requirements in the design phase we can uh, assess the threats and put a plan for the risk assessment and management and also for redundancy you have to put your plan for that in the implementation phase you should apply some uh, some reviews some techniques used to review the code to make sure it's secure like for example pair programming like code reviews like defensive programming these are methods and techniques used to test the code after it has been completed uh, in the testing of the system we can uh, uh, make security unit tests uh, and also vulnerability tests and test cases and in the deployment deployment means installing the system and training the users to for for that system so uh, we can make penetration testing and attack uh, say, tests and uh, default values so uh, in a code review system programmers must have their code uh, peer reviewed before committing it to the repository in addition to peer review new employees are often assigned 
a more senior programmer who uses the code review opportunities to point out uh, inconsistencies with company style and practice. This is a practice uh, used uh, in uh, software development. You make pairs. That means uh, any new employee, any new programmer, you assign uh, him a, a job and you make one senior programmer work with that uh, new programmer. So they, they become a pair because uh, the new uh, uh, programmer will benefit from the experience of the senior programmer uh, to uh, uh, discover any mistakes and uh, defects in the code and to correct them including security issues. Unit testing is the principle of testing your software in small units as it is developed. Okay, and usually the units in a unit test are module or class. And the test can compare the expected behavior of the class against the actual output. If you break any existing functionality, a unit test will discover uh, will discover it right away, saving you future headache and bugs. It's recommended here. Yeah. In short, it is it's recommended to use unit testing. It will help you. Pair programming is a technique where two programmers work together at the same time on one computer. One programmer drives the work and manipulates the mouse and keyboard, while the other programmer can focus on catching mistakes and high-level thinking. After a set time interval, the roles are switched and work continues, like uh, a continuous code review. Uh, security testing is the process of testing the system against scenarios that attempt to break the final system. It can also include penetration testing where the company attempts to, uh, to break into their own systems to find vulnerabilities as if they were hackers. Whereas normal testing focuses on passing user requirements Security testing focuses on surviving one or more attacks that simulate what could be out in the, in the wild. Um, systems are often created with default values that create security risks like a blank password, for example. Uh, secure by default <coughs> aims to make the default settings of a software system secure. So download operator ma manuals uh, on uh, line video with step-by-step -step ATM hacking instructions and program ATM to distribute, uh, uh, for example, uh, $20 uh, instead of $5 and so on. So these are examples for secure by default. And social engineering, uh, this is uh, the human part of information security that increases the effectiveness of an attack. No one would uh, click a link in an email that said click here to get a virus, but they might click a link to uh, get your free vacation. And examples, uh, there are cases, uh, Citibank email, uh, web page scam, uh, the overconfident uh, CIO and amusement park and so on. Phishing uh, scams such as the Spanish uh, prisoner or the Nigerian prince scams, uh, users might be tricked into disclosing information or even sending money in the hopes of freeing up even more. So good defenses include spam filters, good policies with users trained not to click links in emails, and some organizations go uh, for uh, us to set up false phishing scams 
that target their own employees to see which ones will uh, divulge information to such scams. Security threater is when uh, visible security measures are put in place without too much concern as to how effective they are at improving actual security. This is often done in uh, 4 by 0 or 0 4 pages via a stern uh, warning might treat your IP address is so and so this unauthorized access attempt has been locked any illegal activity will be reported to the authorities uh, section 2 authentication uh, authentication is the process of deciding that someone is who they say they are and therefore permitted to access the requested resources whether getting entrance to an airport logging into the company network or logging into your bank's site all these are all uh, or need authentication so uh, the authentication factors uh, the things you can ask someone for so authentication factors are the things you can ask someone for if an effort in an effort to validate that they are who they claim to be so uh, what you know <coughs> you can ask about knowledge passwords uh, PIN security questions and so on what you have ownership like access card cell phone number uh, cryptographic uh, FOP and so on what you are uh, uh, here, like uh, fingerprints, DNA, walking, and so on. So, knowledge factors are the things you know, like passwords, pin, uh, challenge question. Ownership are the things you uh, possess, uh, like a key, like a card, like a mobile phone, like an uh, FOP. And uh, inheritance factors are the things you are, like fingerprints, signature, DNA, and so on. Uh, single factor authentication. Uh, so, uh, this is the weakest and most common category of authentication system where you ask for only one of the three factors uh, either to know a password or to possess an access card or fingerprint access on your mobile phone when um, better authentication confidence is required more than one <coughs> authentication factor should be considered uh, multi-factor authentication <coughs> uh, that means more than one uh, is where two distinct factors of authentication must pass before you are granted access uh, ATM machine is an example of two-factor authentication you must have both the knowledge factor which is the PIN and the ownership factor which is the card so multi-factor authentication is becoming prevalent in consumer product, uh, products as well uh, your cell phone is used as the ownership factor alongside uh, it receives uh, barcode for example or passcode and your password as a knowledge factor third party authentication many popular services allow you to use their system to authenticate the user and provide you with enough data to manage your application third party authentication seems like uh, open id this third party holds uh, your credentials can be used for uh, multiple sites and uh, auth giving people permission to access your stuff and third party uh, verifies so popular with developers and are used under the hood by many major websites including Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft and Twitter and others uh, here 
third party authentication requires some effort so uh, O auth uses four user roles the resource owner is normally the end user who can get access to the resource although it can be a computer as well or system and the resource server hosts the resources and can process requests using the access tokens the client is the application making request on behalf of the resource owner and the authorization server issues tokens to the client upon successful authentication of the resource owner often this is the same as the resource server so here uh, how it works uh, here is a sequence diagram this is known as a sequence diagram in uh, uh, you have already studied in uh, object oriented analysis and design so uh, the resource owner for example user request login page from uh, <coughs> here the client uh, using the web uh, server and here is the authentication server and here is the resource server so the user requests and here uh, step number zero the client registers first and after he registers uh, you request a login page and then the client redirects the user to authentication server with its client id and call back url and so uh, upon a valid login authentication the server returns a redirect to the client containing the authorization code and then uh, the user will enter the authorization code and uh, uh, so uh, it, uh, he will send it or she will send it to the authentication server and uh, so the client requests an access token using the authorization code and uh, secret and uh, so if uh, the token is right or correct so uh, it will get access then the uh, user wants to access something so access token he will enter the access token and the resource request resource to be accessed and the access token obtained earlier grants access to the resource from the resource server so this is it these are the steps for this technique uh, authorization uh, is different from uh, authentication authorization defines what rights and privileges a user has once they are authenticated so authentication grants access versus authorization defines what the user with access can do so the principle of least privilege is a helpful rule of some that tells you to give users and software only the privileges required to accomplish their work that means give them the access needed to do their job to do the work no more no less some examples in web development via uh, proper authorization increases security include the following using a separate database user for read and write privileges on a database providing each user an account where they can access their own files securely uh, setting permissions correctly so as to not expose files to unauthorized users ensuring apache is not running as the root account <coughs> and uh, here uh, the last section for this uh, lecture cryptography uh, means secret messages so being able to send a secure message has been an important tool in uh, warfare and affairs of state of centuries so at the basic level we are trying to get a message from one actor to another without an um, 
if a dropper intercepting the message so since a single packet of data is routed through any number of intermediate location on its way to the destination getting your data and password is as simple as reading the data during one of the hops unless you use cryptography so here uh, for example we have here Alice and Bob and Eve so Alice sends message to Bob so and Bob receives the message Eve intercepts the message Eve can intercept the message uh, between the two and uh, may, 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 be, may be able to read that message and see its contents uh, so uh, using cryptography so Alice encrypts the message with a key and uh, number two Alice transmits this cipher and uh, Eve intercepts cipher but could not understand it because it is encrypted or encoded and number four Bob receives cipher and decrypts it using the key so this is the goal of cryptography so a cipher is a message that is scrambled so that it cannot easily be read unless one has some secret key the key can be a number <coughs> a phrase or a page from a book what is important to keep the key a secret between the sender and the receiver so a uh, substitution cipher is one where each character of the original message is replaced with another character according to the encryption algorithm and key and uh, it has different types <coughs> it has the Kaiser encryption and the beginner one time pad and modern plot ciphers uh, this is an old and well known uh, cipher the Kaiser cipher named for and used by the Roman Emperor is a substitution cipher where every letter of a message is replaced with another letter by shifting the alphabet over an agreed number from one to 25 and here this is the plain alphabet and this is the cipher alphabet after shifting okay so D becomes in place of A and E becomes in place of B and F in place of C and so on so here the shift is three characters so the message hello for example becomes these words these uh, letters when a shift value of three is used so the problem with uh, Lucy ciphers uh, the frequency of letters and sets of two and three letters is well known here is uh, diagram showing that so if you notice uh, notice the letter J occurring most frequently it might be well be the letter E so yeah the letter E is the most frequent letter in English after it uh, A and then R and then I so uh, letter distribution is not flat so any good cipher must therefore try to make the resulting cipher text letter distribution relatively flat so as to remove any trace of the telltale pattern of letter distribution and simply swapping one letter for uh, another does not do that associating other techniques and so we have this technique uh, early attempt to flatter letter distribution ciphers uh, uh, the beginner cipher named for 16th century uh, cryptographer uses a keyword to encode a message the key phrase is written below the message and the letters are added together to form the cipher text as illustrated so this is the blame 
message and here we put another uh, message with it <coughs> and then we encrypt and use a key and so uh, it becomes uh, coded this is a cipher <coughs> and to the decrypt we use the same other message this one and then we will de de decrypt it and we, we obtain the original message that means uh, a parallel text we use a parallel text uh, so uh, or a phrase uh, with the original message uh, one time pad this is uh, refers to a perfect technique of cryptography where Alice and Pop Pops have identical copies of a very long sheet of numbers random randomly created so Claude Shannon famously proved that the one-time pad is impossible to crack however it is impractical to implement on a large scale and remains a theoretical benchmark that is rarely applied in practice and the modern block uh, ciphers uh, encrypt and decrypt messages using an iterative replacing of messages with another scrambled message using 64 or even 128 bits at a time instead of one character at a time so the data encryption standard this and its replacement and also we have the advanced encryption standard AES these are two block ciphers uh, still used in web encryption today uh, this is an explanation for uh, this uh, encryption here uh, and here uh, we have what is known as symmetric key and public key I will leave this for uh, the next lecture inshallah to be explained